and great to see you. We need you. We haven't got much time before the aliens realize we're here to take back Earth. And I'm going to give you some ideas about how to do it. This week in game news, the bat controversy continues, Concrete Jungle was updated with a night mode in new buildings, Molly News Godus has been updated, Xenonauts 2 has been announced, Iron Tower Studio is working on an RPG set on a colony ship, Super Hot is coming out February 25th, Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro will be holding a keynote presentation at this year's DICE Summit, and some great games have been released. All this and more for this is the Black Man and Robin Game News Update. Loyal citizens, I stand before you truly humbled on this 20th anniversary of Unification Day. We once again celebrate the fall of the unjust and corrupt governments of old. We honor the arrival of our saviors from the stars who ushered in two decades of peace and prosperity. To start with this week's game releases, this week the hotly anticipated XCOM 2 was released, the latest game in the long-running XCOM series and the sequel to 2012's XCOM Enemy Unknown, it's a tactical turn-based strategy game in which you control a squad of elite soldiers and you put them to work fighting off an alien menace that's invaded the world. Humanity has been subjugated and XCOM, the force that was supposed to repel the alien force in the previous game, has failed or so assumes XCOM 2, an interesting direction for the game's story. Thus, you're driven underground, placing some tight limits on your organization and resources. The reviews are in, and apparently XCOM 2 has outdone its predecessor. While it does have some pacing issues towards the middle, same as Enemy Unknown, as well as some small graphical glitches, overall, XCOM 2 is a great game. I'm planning on getting my hands on it sometime since I really enjoyed Enemy Unknown. XCOM 2 is out now for Windows, Mac, and Linux. If you'd rather fight a pulpier alien menace up close and personal, Fortified was released on Steam this week and it's gotten pretty good reception from players thus far. Set in the 1950s, Fortified calls upon players to defend the world against endless swarms of Martian robots. The game combines third-person shooting with RTS elements, it's an action-oriented tower defense game, and in case you're wondering, there's a jetpack, which pretty much has me sold on the game. I have not yet played it, and it may be some while before I get my hands on it, but if you've been playing Fortified, or you do pick it up, let me know what you think on Twitter. I'd be happy to share your thoughts on our next episode. Fortified is available on Steam for Windows. Anime Cyberpunk Adventure is more your thing? Not to worry. Digimon Cyber Sleuth was released this week, and according to the reviews, it does not disappoint. From what I've been hearing, it's less of the cutesy Digimon franchise that most folks are accustomed to, and more of the dramatic, intense stuff that you might have experienced in Digimon Tamers. It's Digimon Deconstruction, and for a gamier comparison, think Pokemon meets Persona. There's a mysterious entity eating things, and of course, it's up to you to find out just what's going on. It's a great JRPG, and it's out now for both PlayStation 4 and Vita. A wish from a girl will create miracles, and perhaps save the Digimon. If you're a JRPG fan gaming on PC, might I suggest skipping out on the recent port of Tales of Symphonia? It's a great JRPG, however, the problem is that the PC port of the game is everything that a PC port should not be. How bad, you wonder? 
The complaints are in and they are numerous. Besides instability, a frame rate that's supposed to be locked at 30, but sometimes drops past that, invasive DRM and graphical glitches, the game requires some sort of controller. You can't play with a mouse and keyboard. This is a PC game. This is Bandai Namco's biggest embarrassment of 2016, and it's only February. What makes this especially disappointing is that Tales of Symphonia is a fantastic game. Just, you're best off playing the GameCube version that came out over a decade ago, not the glitchy mess that was hastily cobbled together for PC. Such a good game deserves so much better from its PC port. A while ago, we covered a game called Grip. The spiritual successor to the Roll Cage series, Grip had a Kickstarter that wound up cancelled. The developers decided to continue work on the project, and this week, Grip hits Steam Early Access. Grip is a combat racing game with plenty of traction, as implied by its title. Be ready to race on the walls as you duel your opponents, and personally, I'm glad to see that the game is going forward, and thus far, the players have had good things to say about it, even though it's quite unfinished. Grip is out now in Early Access for Windows. Prefer platformers, we've got you covered with Cobalt. This game's been in development for the last couple of years by Mojang, and it has a pretty dedicated fanbase for good reason. It's excellent. Cobalt is a platformer that boasts local multiplayer. There's co-op for the story campaign and a couple other modes, as well as a versus mode for when you'd like to duke it out against a few friends. If you don't have a couch co-op partner, don't despair. There's also online multiplayer. Cobalt is available for Windows, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. Another cool platformer came to Steam this week, Blitzbreaker. Blitzbreaker is a Twitch platformer in which you play as a cute little robot, the titular Blitz, and you can neither run nor walk. But don't let that stop you. You can Blitz. Leap powerfully in one of four directions, off of walls and floors. It's a pretty simple game. You avoid spikes, grab coins, and try to get through levels quickly. I've played some Blitzbreaker, and it's surprisingly addictive. I definitely recommend it if you're looking for a cute puzzle platformer with a fair amount of challenge. Blitzbreaker is available on Windows. Mac and Linux ports are currently in development. Out on the PlayStation 4 this week is Gravity Rush Remastered. Previously released on the PlayStation Vita, the game is an ARPG in which you fly around the world, manipulating gravity as you see fit. Hence the title, Gravity Rush. The game draws inspiration from an interesting mix of sources. The gameplay itself was inspired by the super-powered cop game Crackdown, whereas the art is inspired by classic French comics. A second Gravity Rush is in development for the PlayStation 4. If you missed the original Gravity Rush on the Vita and this sounds like your cup of gravity, check out Gravity Rush Remastered. Last week, a game called Defunct was released on Steam and somehow we missed it, so just to fill you in, it's a time trial racing game in which you play as a zippy little robot from a cargo ship trying to get back home after accidentally landing on Earth. It's a relatively brief game, but from what I've heard from players, it has tons of replayability and an awesome art style. Defunct is available for Windows. In Bat Controversy news, it turns out that Batman Arkham Knight has been cancelled from Mac and Linux. 
As per a post on the Batman Arkham Knight Steam forums by a Warner Brothers staffer, the troubled PC version of Batman Arkham Knight has delivered one last disappointment. At least, we're hoping it's the last disappointment. I mean, honestly, at this point, I don't know how else Warner Brothers can find a new way to disappoint their fans with Batman Arkham Knight. In case you're just tuning into our show, Batman Arkham Knight is a Batman game, duh, that was released last year on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Those versions of the game were fantastic. Unfortunately, the PC version of the game was awful, glitchy, and wound up pulled from sale. That's the short of the matter. The thing is, Warner Brothers has let their fans down with Arkham Knight badly, and over the months, they've continued to disappoint. When Arkham Knight was re-released on PC, it was still full of glitches and didn't run very well. Right now, the game is still being worked on. There's no indication of when it'll actually be finished. Regarding the latest update to GOTUS, the game has been replaced on Steam by GOTUS Wars. In case you're wondering, the original GOTUS is still available to purchase through GOTUS Wars. This whole thing stirred up a fresh pot of controversy this week. What you should understand is that the original GOTUS was a game that was kickstarted by Peter Molyneux and his company 22 Cans. The original GOTUS was a god game that promised a lot and really didn't deliver. In GOTUS, you'd sculpt the world that a civilization would come to live on. You'd collect followers and gain power. GOTUS Wars, on the other hand, is not quite finished. The game is in early access, and in case you're wondering, yes, it does come with the original GOTUS. If you own the original game, then you've not lost a GOTUS, you've just gained a GOTUS Wars. GOTUS Wars adds real-time strategy to the game, and it was a source of controversy because players discovered that this barely finished expansion to GOTUS included microtransactions. A game that was barely ready to be played was fully prepared to take players' money. This resulted in a fresh rash of negative Steam reviews, and faster than you can say broken promises, 22 cans removed the microtransactions. GOTUS Wars is available on Mac and Windows. The original GOTUS is also available on iOS and Android. In crowdfunding news this week, a game that caught our eye is the ambitious City of the Shroud. It's a tactical RPG with real-time elements. It's a rather unusual blend of elements that draws inspiration from the likes of Final Fantasy Tactics and Fire Emblem. Something that really stood out to me about the story is that it's community-driven. The game will be published in four episodes, and based on how the player base goes through the game, the balance of power will shift in the game's story, hence, if one faction begins rising to power, more players giving it power, this rise will be better explored in the next chapter of the game. If you'd like to try City of the Shroud, there's a demo on their Kickstarter page. The game's set to be released August 2016 for Mac and Windows. Another game on Kickstarter that caught my eye is called Consortium, The Tower. The second game in the Consortium series, The Tower is a game in which you play as a futuristic super soldier named Bishop Six. The game draws much inspiration from Deus Ex in that you'll be able to either fight, stealth, or talk your way through the game. The whole game takes place in the titular tower. There's a hostage situation going on inside. Your mission is to save the hostages and let the police take care of the rest. Personally, I'm fond of games that afford players the freedom to make actual choices. That's the element that's at the heart of a good role-playing game. I confess, the original Consortium is yet another game that I have yet to play. That said, I do know based on the testimony of many, many players that the original game is fantastic as well. If you enjoy Mass Effect, 
Check out Consortium. On Steam Greenlight this week is a game called Super Impossible Road. In development for Windows, Mac, and Linux, it's a racing game in which you play as a cute round vehicle zipping around on a dangerous unbounded track in a great white limbo. The races are designed to be unfair. If you want to win, you have to cheat. And you cheat by jumping off over the edge of the track, carefully making your way down to the rest of the track that's closer to the finish line. In addition to being developed for Mac, Windows, and Linux, Super Impossible Road is also in development for the PlayStation 4. You can vote for it on Greenlight if you'd like to see it on Steam. You can also play the game's predecessor, Impossible Road, on mobile. If you love LEGO, there's a good chance that you're also a fan of Star Wars, and incidentally, you may have played one or more video games combining these two subjects. If so, you've probably already heard that LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens has been announced. Out June 28, 2016, it looks to be your standard LEGO game, a third-person action game that's a significantly sillier retelling of its source material with a lot of brick collection, building stuff that's really just holding down a button, waiting for something to come together, etc. Personally, I'm looking forward to seeing how they handle Kylo Ren's fits of rage. That's prime laughter material right there. LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens is coming to Windows, the PlayStation Vita, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Nintendo 3DS, Wii U, Xbox One, and Xbox 360. Finally, we have the latest trailer for the upcoming Mirror's Edge Catalyst. This hotly anticipated parkour game is actually going into beta soon. If you'd like to sign up for that, we have a link at blackmanandrobin.com. You're broken. Anything having to do with Gabriel Kruger, we need to stay miles away from. I thought that this would be a... Uh, no, you didn't think, Faith. You never do. Don't get lost. <laughs> Barely out of prison and already stirring things up? Your parents would be proud. Mr. Kruger, he is out for runner blood. Whatever it is you stole from him must be very valuable. Stop her! If you keep this up, I swear you'll be dead in a month. Using every weapon at our disposal, we've got to destroy it. Back off! Kruger did this. And he'll be able to do it to anyone unless he stopped. Get out of my sight! That's it? What else is there? You're wrong. I'm not broken. Prove it. a fighter in you after all. Well, that's it for this week's game news. Be sure to follow at Blackman and Robin on Twitter and Instagram for all the latest game news, reviews, previews, and interviews. Follow me at Jordan underscore Cameron for my own views, and don't forget to share your opinions on any game news from the show. I'd be happy to share your tweets on next week's episode.
For convenient links to the Kickstarters and some other things from today's episode, be sure to visit our website, blackmanandrobin.com. We go indoor climbing. So I had this kind of background where, okay, climbing, well, what happens when I climb? I usually, I look at the wall and I look where my next grip is. Had that in mind, I also thought, yeah, that's actually something I could easily prototype in crime. One of my favorite moments in developing the climb was early on in the prototype stages. At the very essence of the mechanic, we realized that this was something unique, something we hadn't experienced before. We basically had a controller in our hand and we had those two triggers which basically symbolized closing the hands with the um, back triggers. And the controls of where you go were basically head motion and so you look where you want to go and then you push the trigger which is go here, go there. Immediately when in the white box we realized that with the proper dressing of the environment that could be a fantastic experience. And then we, with CryEngine we can put together real quick vistas and yeah, the moment we try it, so okay, that's it. A different kind of mindset was required for a VR game. You have to think about more things. You have to think about physical um, comfort. You have to make sure it's performant all the time. You have to make sure that your interaction with the world puts you into the place. Movement is something that you take for granted in any standard title. In VR titles, it's something that you have to relearn from scratch. It is more challenging, but the, but the challenges are not the same. They're actually different and they are, they, are, they are fresh. I'm glad to be part of this team. I believe we are doing some very extraordinary things. You are hanging literally 100 meters above a sea level on a rock. It's really, really cool, but there are also intense moments where you want to jump from A to B and uh, to get a shortcut. These jumps are really intense. Since our acceleration curve for falling is absolutely realistic, that really sets your heart, like when you, poof, you grab on again. But then you realize, wow, man, I just traversed that two meter area so much faster than everybody else, will be great on my time. And after a while, you start like, can I do that while I look down? Like, whoa. <laughs> It's interesting when you talk about VR, because we're talking about presence in the 3D space. That presence allows you to feel very similar adrenaline, very similar excitement as you would if you were actually there. So if you want to know what it's like to climb a cliff face, you're actually going to get that feeling. Achieved with CryEngine. So that's how to best use Overwatch in XCOM 2.